Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to today's Medal of Honor induction ceremony honoring Senior Chief Special Warfare Operator, Sea, Air, and Land, Edward C. Byers, Jr. Senior Chief Byers has been presented our nation's highest and most prestigious award for valor by the President of the United States, the Medal of Honor. This afternoon, the United States Navy will pay tribute to this courageous sailor of the global war on terrorism. As the Deputy Secretary of Defense, the Honorable Robert O. Work, the Secretary of the Navy, the Honorable Ray Mabus, the Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral John M. Richardson, and the Master Chief Petty Officer of the Navy, Master Chief Michael D. Stevens, formally induct him into the Pentagon's most sacred place, the Hall of Heroes. Please rise for the arrival of the official party and for the singing of our national anthem by musician first class Kenneth Horton, and remain standing for the invocation, which will be delivered by Deacon Trevor Fernandez. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight O'er oh, the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free and the home of the Deacon Trevor Fernandez, Senior Chief Byers' brother-in-law, will now offer the invocation. My brothers and sisters, let us bow our heads to our God. Almighty God, Lord of creation, you have endowed human beings with the ability to choose what is right and good and to avoid that which is evil. From your own lips we have heard these words, which have echoed out over the ages, that there is no greater love that a man could have than to lay down his life for his friends, but also that whatsoever you do to the least, the least of my brethren, you did it for me. In Chief Byers' heroic actions, which are above the call of duty, he exemplifies both of these scriptural statements in covering the body of Dr. Joseph with his own he exemplified the self-sacrifice that is required of love, of neighbor, of God, and of country. In attempting to revive his fallen comrade and brother, Nick Check, he exemplifies laying down his life for one's friend. We ask your blessings and gratitude for bringing Ed Byers safely home to his family and friends and to his team and to a grateful nation and we ask and implore your blessings and mercy upon the soul of Nick Check and of his family. And upon this great nation, we ask that you strengthen it, fortify it, and let each one of us leave here exemplifying 
these two great statements of scripture, which are the reason we are here to honor Chief Byers. We ask all these things in your most holy name. Amen. Guests, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce the host of today's ceremony, the Honorable Robert O. Work, Deputy Secretary of Defense. Well, Secretary Mavis, Admiral Richardson, um, Master Chief Petty Officer of Navy Stevens, General Votel, are you here? Uh, okay, General Neller, members of the Special Operations Community, distinguished guests, friends of Senior Chief Byer, welcome. I also want to recognize past Medal of Honor recipients, and I would especially like to welcome the three who are here today, and I would ask, gentlemen, that you stand and be recognized. Please. It's a personal honor for me to represent Secretary of Defense Ash Carter, who is traveling today, to recognize Senior Chief Edward Byers, who was yesterday awarded our nation's highest military decoration from our Commander-in-Chief, President Obama, for the heroic actions on one historic evening in Afghanistan. Now, shortly, you're going to hear from Secretary Mabus and Admiral Richardson about Senior Chief Byers' incredible actions that fateful night. Before they do, however, I'd like to take a moment to pay tribute to the fighting spirit of our sailors and their elite group of special warriors, those who wear the trident of the U.S. Navy SEALs. Now, the men and women of the United States Navy are part of the finest Navy this world has ever seen. It's a Navy that came into being when the, British, when the British Royal Navy dominated the seas. And every single U.S. ship's captain and crew wanted to get out there and prove themselves against the world's best. Now today, we have a special relationship with the United Kingdom. They are probably one of our most closest ally, if not our most closest ally. But back in the day, not so much. So when our nations came to blow, the U.S. Navy was always looking for a fight. And their fighting spirit was embodied by captains like John Paul Jones, who demanded a faster ship to hunt down the British and memorably declared, I will sink, I will never strike. Now this pugnacious individual fighting spirit has imbued our Navy from the very beginning. In 1943, one of the best examples that I always use and remember was at the commissioning ceremony for the USS destroyer USS Johnston in 1943 in the midst of World War II. On the day it was commissioned, that commanding officer, his name was Ernest E. Evans, he spoke to his crew and he said, this is going to be a fighting ship. I intend to go into harm's way and anyone who doesn't want to go along had better get off right now. And he went on to say that as a fighting ship, I will never retreat from an enemy force. And he was true to his word. In 1944, at the Battle of Leyte Gulf, he was in charge of that small destroyer, and he charged a line of uh, Japanese cruisers and battleships to save a group of escort carriers. He went down with his ship, but his aggressiveness in the face of overwhelming odds helped scatter the Japanese warships, saving the cruiser, I mean, the carrier force, and he was awarded the Medal of Honor. Now, perhaps nowhere does this fighting spirit of the United States Navy burn more brighter than in the U.S. Navy SEALs, who, as their, Navy, as their name implies, are ready to fight against any foe from the land, from or on the sea, or under the sea, and from the air. They are forced with its roots in the underwater demolition teams from World War II and Korea, 
formally created in 1961, they are a singular, powerful, and surgical asset to which we entrust our nation's toughest missions. Now, they are a singularly special group within our nation's singularly capable special operations forces. There are about 2.1 million men and women in the United States military today, in both active and reserve. There's a bit over 69,000 special operators, just a very small percentage of that 2.1 million. And of these 69,000, only 2,700 are in the U.S. Navy SEALs. Now, its members, like Senior Chief Ed Byers, are selected to be a SEAL. They're not trained to be one. They have to, be ex they have to exhibit the highest qualities to be selected to join this very small group of warriors. Things like integrity, character, judgment, flexibility, grit, and resiliency. There is an ethos that they live by that makes these warriors the elite unit that they are. They will not be defeated by any loss. They will not be intoxicated by success. They will never hide from failure. So today, as we pay tribute to Senior Chief Byers and his remarkable heroism, through him we pay tribute to all special operators that serve our nation, and especially today, his teammates in the SEALs. Now, Navy SEAL missions since 9-11 have always been at the sharp edge of the spear. Again and again, in Iraq and Afghanistan and elsewhere, over 15 years of continuous war. Senior Chief Byers has 11 overseas deployments with nine combat tours. Before yesterday, he had already been recognized for valor eight times, including five Bronze Stars. He has been wounded twice and awarded the Purple Heart twice. And you know what's remarkable as we sit here today? At any congregation of SEALs up until today or yesterday, his bravery would not have stood out because every single one of the special operators you would see there, and they have been similarly decorated for their bravery. They truly do embody the phrase, uncommon valor is a common virtue. But today, Senior Chief Byers does stand out. He is the 3,497th serviceman to be awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. Out of perhaps 40 million men and women who have served our nation, in time of war. That is a fraternity of warriors even more exclusive, Ed, than the SEALs. The possibility of receiving his highest honor probably never crossed his mind when he volunteered to serve his, to serve his nation as a Navy corpsman back in 1998, or when he volunteered to attend, attend SEAL training, or when he volunteered to maneuver with his team by foot over Afghan mountains on that cold December night. Few people could execute that mission. But the Navy SEALs and Ed Byers did. All I will say about Senior Chief Byers' self selfless and heroic actions in the face of a determined enemy, which are going to be recounted shortly in detail, reads like a, Hollow a Hollywood, Hollywood excuse me, script. And as a movie aficionado, I have to say, the SEALs always get the best movies. I mean, American Sniper, Zero Dark Thirty, Lone Survivor, Tears of the Sun. We won't talk about Charlie Sheen but that's okay. But if, a Hollywood, if Hollywood ever decides to make a movie about the incredible rescue of Dr. Dilip Joseph from the Taliban, Ed Byers' humility, his precision, his coolness under fire, his selfness, and incredible warrior spirit would seem too fantastical for us to believe. But his deadly skill and willingness to sacrifice himself to save Dr. Joseph's life is anything but fantastical. That night he made several life and death decisions and acted on them in a time period barely longer than it takes me to read this sentence. He acted as both a sword and a shield, positioning himself between harm and the hostage while simultaneously neutralizing the threats around him. That's what our special operators do in a hostage rescue mission one of the most complex and dangerous and demanding missions our military performs, and in every other mission that they are called upon to perform. Now, Ed has already earned the privilege of wearing the trident, and through his actions that night in December 2012, he has now earned the privilege of wearing something more, which is what we celebrate today. 
The poet Carl Sandburg said, valor is a gift. Those having it never know for sure if they have it till the test comes. Senior Chief Byers has been tested again and again, and he has that gift. Now, this is what I do whenever I have the opportunity and honor to speak uh, for, with a Medal of Honor winner. As you all know, it is our custom that regardless of your rank or station, that whenever you meet a recipient of the Congressional Medal of Honor, you stand and salute them. So Ed, I would like you to stand up and face the crowd. And to all of those of you who are in uniform and have served our nation, I ask you to join me in saluting this remarkable warrior. Hand salute. Ready, two. Thank you. Now, in closing, let me say that we've asked a lot of our special operators over the last 15 years. They have always answered the call, and they have suffered a heavy price. Today, as we honor Byers, Valor, and Sacrifice, we always remember the fallen, especially today, one of his teammates, Petty Officer First Class Nicholas Check, who was killed on the same mission as Senior Chief Byers is being honored for. We acknowledge and thank him and his two sisters, Ashley and Tuesday. Are you here, Ashley, Tuesday? Okay, they are not here today, but we honor them. And we also honor the 2,349 American service members who have given their life in service of their country in Afghanistan in Operation Enduring Freedom, the longest war in our history. We also honor the service and sacrifice of troops who have returned home from war as they heal their wounds, as they build their new lives for themselves and their families in and beyond the military service. Senior Chief Byers, your story represents the very best of American fighting men and women. And it preserves the memory of your comrades and Nicholas Check. May your medal remind you of the tremendous good your service has bought thus far, brought thus far, and of the limitless things that I know that you and your teammates will continue to do in the future. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to introduce the Honorable Ray Mabus, Secretary of the Navy. Thank you all for joining us here today. To Senior Chief Ed Byers, to Madison, to the extraordinary Hannah, who has captivated everybody here, to Senior Chief's mom, Peggy, to Madison's parents, Kwong and Mae Young, to the Senior Chief's incredibly extended family. And I just want to say, when I've gone to my family reunions, we have a lot of buyers that come. I'm going to claim some kinship with you. <laughs> but it is my honor to be here today. I couldn't be prouder to be part of a ceremony that recognizes a United States sailor with the highest award our nation has for valor, for heroism, and for bravery. As Secretary Work said, later you'll hear the citation describing the actions that the senior chief took on the night of December 8th that distinguished him for this award. His loyalty to the mission to rescue a fellow American despite a deadly threat and a determined enemy by literally using himself as a shield to protect his countrymen, his selflessness in its purest sense. 
I had the chance to speak with Senior Chief and his family in my office last week. And we talked about a lot of things, but one of the, the proudest things I have in my office that I'm proudest of is some steel from the World Trade Center that Senior Chief's unit gave me, Dev Group. And on it is inscribed, the deed is all, not the glory. And that's what we talked about. That's what we talked about, about the SEAL community. That's what we talked about, about his teammates. And in fact, I think the last time I had seen Ed Byers was at the Navy Cross presentation for Nick Check, who, as you heard and as you know, died in the action for which we're honoring Senior Chief Byers. And it was only after Senior Chief's Medal of Honor became public and was announced that it also became public knowledge that Nick Check had been posthumously awarded the Navy Cross, even after giving the last full measure of devotion, even in death, what Nick Check and his comrades did and what they do is known only to a few. I've been to a good many of these ceremonies and presented awards that most people, even in our military, will never know about. Now, Senior Chief Byers exudes that quiet strength that's so emblematic of our Navy SEALs and of all our special forces. Because for SEALs, like that piece of steel said, the deed is all, not the glory. Today, Navy Special Warfare community is deployed in more than 40 countries around the world, and they're there every day. And since 9-11, 70 members of a small community have given their lives in overseas operations. And you almost never hear the details, and that's the way it's supposed to be. The very nature of the missions that we ask of these elite warriors means that they often return, usually return, from dangerous assignments without pomp or circumstance or public thanks. Over the past 15 years, as Secretary Work said, we've asked an incredible amount of this community, and they have shouldered that heavy burden of the country's most dangerous assignments and they've done it brilliantly. So because of the ethos that keeps this tight-knit group of sailors so quiet, so humble, so extraordinary, it's really important that we take these rare chances like the one we have today to remind America, if only in a single glimpse, what extraordinary acts by extraordinary people are done in the service of this country. And it's important to be reminded just how fortunate we as a country are that people like Ed Byers and Nick Check and every member of our special warfare community chose to serve our country for the deed, not the glory. As a leader of the Department of the Navy, I've had the privilege of visiting with our SEALs where they're deployed around the world. And I'm more aware than most of exactly how much we rely on the excellence of these warriors. Beyond the story we hear today are hundreds we never will. There are stories of individuals and teams living out our core values of honor, courage, and commitment 
every single day. So to echo what Secretary Work said, Senior Chief Byers, thank you. You represent thousands of SEALs whose deeds will never be known to a wider audience, and you represent them incredibly well. You and all of them exemplify our Navy's creed, Semper Fortis, always courageous. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to introduce Admiral John M. Richardson, Chief of Naval Operations. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. And uh, let me just express what an honor it is to be here today with this group of luminaries, families, and friends. We've certainly heard a lot about Senior Chief Byers and his heroic actions. And I think we can all agree he represents the absolute best of our servicemen, women, service women, of our Navy, and of our country. And he joins a tremendous uh, group of Medal of Honor winners. I would just join Secretary uh, Work in paying tribute to our Medal of Honor winners who could join us today. And he joins other Navy Medal of Honor winners, like uh, Admiral James Bond Stockdale who uh, received his medal from President Ford. Yesterday, we awarded the Medal of Honor to Senior Chief Byers. And we had a chance to get to know each other, Senior Chief and his family. And uh, to know Senior Chief is to hear from him, you know, it's not about me, it's all about my team. This is a common refrain, I think, from all Medal of Honor winners. Even though they received the award for their valor, but for them, it's all about their teammates. From Robert Ingram, a Navy corpsman in Vietnam, who said, you can lay there under fire and die, or you can get up and go. And I decided the men needed me out there. From Tommy Norris, an American was down in enemy territory, and of course, I would do it all again. Senior Chief Byers is emblematic of this generation's continued commitment to those core values, honor, courage, and commitment. This, is award, this award is not just about their own unquestioned valor, but also their dedication to their shipmates, their fellow Americans. Senior Chief Byers embodies this dedication, and his actions bring alive the words of the SEAL ethos, which in part reads, my loyalty to country and team is beyond reproach. I humbly serve as a guardian to my fellow Americans, always ready to defend those who are unable to defend themselves. I do not advertise the nature of my work, nor seek recognition for my actions. Senior Chief Byers represents the humility and quiet dignity of all SEALs, a warrior spirit of uncompromising integrity. What fuels such a man? Well, to know Senior Chief for more than five minutes, you know that to achieve such heights, Senior Chief has relied on faith, on family, and as a team leader, a complete dedication to his team. Before every mission, he prayed the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel, which begins St. Michael the Archangel defend us in battle. He is a man of staunch and strong faith. And he is a family man. His family, Madison and Hannah, his mom Peggy, his in-laws, have supported him every step of the way, not only allowing him to do his job, but also keeping things strong at home as a Navy wife and a mother, command ombudsman, in a difficult command to be an ombudsman, serving other Navy families, rounding out that concept of serving the team. And finally, there is the team. When Senior Chief and I were talking the other night at dinner, he mentioned how proud he was of the closeness and dedication of his team and how privileged he was to serve as a team leader. 
And he said something that I think we can all take home in terms of judging or deciding how we should act. He said that as long as you keep the interests of the team first, you never have to do, worry about doing the right thing. It will just happen. So to walk in the shoes of Stockdale and Ingram is an honor, but he's not just walking in their shadow. He is now the inspiration for the next generation of leaders, the next generation of Medal of Honor winners. And his strong faith, his love and support of his family, and his dedication to his team, all will result in future generations looking to him for inspiration, for courage, and the strength to never give up on their teammates. Senior Chief, thank you for your service. Congratulations on a, wise, a job well done. And I would echo what that wise man said, the deed is all, not the glory. Thank you. Deputy Secretary Work, Secretary Mabus, Mick Pond Stevens, and Senior Chief and Mrs. Byers will now join Admiral Richardson on stage for the induction ceremony. Guests, please rise. Attention to citation. The President of the United States, in the name of the Congress, has taken pleasure in awarding the Medal of Honor to Chief Special Warfare Operator C. Air Land, Edward C. Byers, Jr., for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty as a hostage rescue force team member in Afghanistan in support of Operation Enduring Freedom from 8 to 9, December 2012. As the rescue force approached the target building, an enemy sentry detected them and darted inside to alert his fellow captors. The sentry quickly re-emerged and the lead assaulter attempted to neutralize him. Chief Byers with his team sprinted to the door of the target building. As the primary breacher, Chief Byers stood in the doorway fully exposed to enemy fire while ripping down six layers of heavy blankets fastened to the inside ceiling and walls to clear a path for the rescue force. The first assaulter pushed his way through the blankets and was mortally wounded by enemy small arms fire from within. Chief Byers, completely aware of the imminent threat, fearlessly rushed into the room and engaged an enemy guard aiming an AK-47 at him. He then tackled another adult male who had darted towards the corner of the room. During the ensuing hand-to-hand -hand struggle, Chief Byers confirmed the man was not the hostage and engaged him. As other rescue team members called out to the hostage, Chief Byers heard a voice respond in English and raced toward it. He jumped atop the American hostage and shielded him from the high volume of fire within the small room. While covering the hostage with his body, Chief Byers immobilized another guard with his bare hands and restrained the guard until a teammate could eliminate him. His bold and decisive actions under fire saved the lives of the hostage and several of his teammates. By his undaunted courage, intrepid fighting spirit, and unwavering devotion to duty in the face of near certain death, Chief Petty Officer Byers reflected great credit upon himself and upheld the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. Guests, please be seated.
The Hall of Heroes contains plaques with the names of 3,496 service personnel who have earned the Medal of Honor. We will now unveil the plaque inducting Senior Chief Byers into the Hall of Heroes as our nation's 3,497th Medal of Honor recipient. At this time, Deputy Secretary Work will present the Medal of Honor flag. On 23 October 2002, Public Law 107 TAC 248, Section 8143 established the Medal of Honor flag to recognize service members who have distinguished themselves by gallantry in action above and beyond the call of duty. The flag is light blue with gold fringe, bearing 13 white stars in a configuration as on the eight-sided pad from which the medal is suspended. It gives emphasis to the Medal of Honor as being the highest award for valor by an individual serving the United States Armed Forces. The flag is presented folded with one star showing, representing the medal itself. Folding Senior Chief Byers' flag today are sailors from the U.S. Navy Ceremonial Guard.
Thank you, Deputy Secretary Work, Secretary Mabus, Admiral Richardson, Mick Pond Stevens, and Mrs. Byers. Ladies and gentlemen, Senior Chief Special Warfare Operator, Sea, Air, and Land, Edward C. Byers, Jr. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I've realized throughout my life that time is the most precious commodity you have, and I sincerely thank you all for your time today. I will speak just long enough to give credit and recognition to the heroes in my life and to those who de deserve to know that they are the reason that I'm standing here today. Those heroes are my family, my faith, and the brotherhood. Family is the reason I'm able to do this job and it's also the reason to live and to return home safely. Madison, my incredible wife, Hannah, my beautiful daughter. This could not have been possible without your resiliency and love. Your strength in my absence is something I've always admired and respected. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. I will never forget how each time I returned home from long times away, you'd be waiting to pick me up, sometimes in the middle of the night, waiting to give me a hug and a kiss. Especially you, Hannah. I would not be the man I am if it were not for the two of you. You are my heroes. I love you. Hand in hand with my family is my faith. While it has had a more quiet aspect of my life, it has always played a significant role. I grew up Catholic and continue to grow in my faith, thanks especially to my brother, Trevor. He taught me to turn my heart and soul towards Christ when I have strayed or lost my way. Prayer has always provided calm amidst chaos for me. On my first deployment to Iraq some 11 years ago, I arrived in country and I saw another SEAL standing there with him, St. Michael the Archangel patch on his shoulder. I'm not sure what drew me to it, but I walked up to him and asked him if I could have it. He was leaving the combat zone and made it through a safe deployment, so he was absolutely willing to give it to me. He handed it to me without hesitation. I've worn a patch on my kit on every single mission I've ever been a part of. And I prayed the St. Michael prayer while moving in the toughest missions I've faced. And it does start by saying, St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection. On that day in December 2012, the day you heard recounted several times about my team and the way we carried out the mission to rescue American hostage. On that day, just like every day, I prayed. I prayed on the way to my target, and again I prayed over my brother Nicholas Check for his soul as he gave his life to save another American. Nick Check was a warrior, a brother, and a friend. I know I said this repeatedly since this has started. But this award is inseparable from his death. Nick embodied the brotherhood. Nick embodied what it meant to be a Navy SEAL. He was hard as nails, resilient. He had a never quit, never fail mentality. Nick, along with the rest of our team, carried out some of the most difficult and dangerous missions our nation could have asked us to do. Nicholas Check paid the ultimate sacrifice, doing what he loved on the battlefield, because this is what brothers do, they will lay down your life for you if they have to. We are again reminded this morning of the continued sacrifices the men and women of our nation make. The hotel where many of our sustain overlooks Washington, D.C., the Pentagon, and Arlington National Cemetery. As the sun came up over the city, an unfamiliar, almost alarming sound reverberated through the air and a layer of thick, light gray smoke covered our nation's capital like a security blanket. 
The cannons fired and shook probably some of you to the core because you were hearing the sound of sacrifice. I, along with many of my teammates, have been to many funerals at Arlington, probably more than we should at our age and our life. We have seen too many good men buried. So many may ask, what is it that keeps you going? How are you standing here after such loss? The answer is, undoubtedly, without question, the brotherhood. I've saved the brotherhood for last. I want to emphasize that I'm no different than any one of my teammates. I'm certain that any one of them would have taken the same exact actions I did that day. I've seen countless heroic acts in my time working with the nation's most elite operators. I feel a sense of responsibility with the recognition that has been bestowed upon me. My brothers who are still fighting, who are still in the shadows, deserve to share the spotlight. We are, we, we are a community of quiet professionals, and those men would not expect or seek recognition for their actions. I proudly wear this trident to represent the Brotherhood. And now I've been welcomed into another group of exceptional military heroes. I look at the names in the Hall of Heroes and to the brave men right in front of me here and realize the tremendous amount of bravery that flows through our American veins. Freedom is in large part paid by blood, sweat, and tears. I've never imagined my life would lead me here. I'm truly humbled and honored to represent the Navy and the Naval Special Warfare community. My only desire is that my representation is something my brothers who I serve with would be proud of. Because the deed is all, not the glory. May God bless you, and may St. Michael the Archangel protect our warriors in battle, along with the Brotherhood. Thank you. Thank you, Senior Chief Byers. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the benediction and remain standing for the singing of the Navy song. The words to the Navy song can be found on the back of your program. Before this closing benediction, I have to say I'm privileged to be here. The Apostle Paul says that when I was a child, I did childish things as a child would, and now that I'm a man, I have put away the things of childhood and have done manly things. I was 17 and Eddie was seven when his sister and I started dating. So I saw him cheer as he played his video games, took him to horrid B-rate military type movies where he would punch his fist in the air at childish adulation of his heroes. And I would wince, cringing as I corrected some of his worst grammatical errors on high school papers as an older brother might do. And as a chaplain for Catholic war veterans, and as a deacon of the church, it has been my privilege to say under my very nose, he put away the things of childhood and became a man. And that he became a hero for his actions indeed, but actually because he doesn't think himself to be a hero, but exemplifies his warrior brothers and his fallen brother, Nick Check. And so my brothers and sisters, I ask you, let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, we gather one last time to honor Chief Byers. And as we do, we ask you to send your special blessings upon all of us gathered here. To Eddie, to Madison, to Hannah, his family. Watch over them and guide them home. And to all of us gathered here from the four corners of the earth, that St. Christopher and St. Nicholas the Wonder Worker would speed us on our way and that St. Michael the Archangel and our guardian angels truly defend us in battle.
and protect us from the wickedness and snares of the devil. We ask you to bless this great nation, our president, the members of Congress, for those who serve and have served in our armed forces, and for the repose of the soul of all those warriors in special operations and in the other branches of service who have given their lives for this great nation. And until we meet again, may our God hold you in the palm of his hands. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be singing the second verse on the back of your programs if you will please join me. Anchors away, my boys, anchors away. Farewell to foreign shores, we sail at break of day. Through our last night on shore, drink to the foam. Until we meet once more, here's wishing you a happy voyage home. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the departure of the official party. Thank you for attending our ceremony today.